Hey, you guys. Thanks for joining me. Keeping it real with Tommy Trio. This is season three, episode seven. Um, We're going to do a tribute to DMX. He was one of the best rappers and performers that there really was. A lot of times people don't give you uh, the credit that you deserve. So I'm going to do this tribute to DMX, who's uh, who was born in Yonkers, New York. His name was Earl Simmons. His full stage name was DMX, Darkman X. In 2013, he had a very eventful year. Um, he was hit with a lot of different charges. He also filed bankruptcy. Some of the charges was uh, cruelty to animals, drugs, amongst some of them. And uh, his bankruptcy was rejected in 2014. He thought that they were just really picking on him to reject his bankruptcy because who files a bankruptcy and gets it rejected? I hadn't even heard of a bankruptcy being re rejected. But um, they rejected that bankruptcy, and he ended up getting a house foreclosed. And he kind of blamed it on his ex-wife, Tashira Simmons, because he said that she wanted to live like the Rockefellers and stuff and live next to Martha Stewart and everybody, and she was living above her means. But, uh, you know, she didn't want to do that. Like, a lot of, a lot of wives... They don't want to downsize because their husbands are saying, hey, babe, it's kind of hard for us to take care of this right now, whatever the case is. I'm working and I'm doing what I can, but the ends are not meeting as much. And she probably was really resentful uh, about the fact that he had had a couple of illegitimate children while they was married, what they call illegitimate children, because him and her had four kids. Um... They say he was from Yonkers and Mount Vernon. How are you from Yonkers and Mount Vernon? Well, I think it's probably because he was just such a, a person. Like, you know, he was just from everywhere and all that old stuff to where they ain't know if he spent more time in Yonkers or if he spent more time in Mount Vernon. But one thing I can say about that man is that he had a very strong voice and he commanded your attention. Um... A couple of times when I was watching him on TV, I saw him come out with the scarf on like Tupac. And I felt like, okay, that's not bad. That's not bad, you know, because I felt as though he, he probably is one of those prophets that uh, Tupac was. So you just don't know people like that. And I love people like that. I love outgoing people and stuff, people that have, that know what they want. And, and from the information that I read about DMX, he was a man that was really well off and he didn't spend his money and he didn't go out and splurge on, you know, things that a lot of these people think that you're supposed to splurge on when you get your first couple dollars, you know. They say that he was uh, $69 million in there. And he didn't, you know, he didn't just go out and splurge and buy the biggest this and all this old stuff to be flashy. He was more of a spiritual person. He said that uh, one of the things he did say, I'm more of a spiritual person, not a religious person. And I believe that because when it comes to being spiritual and religious, I feel like I'm a very spiritual person myself, but when it comes to religion, I'm not denominational. So, uh, you know, DMX is a person that's really spiritual. And as we know, he lost his life, they say, due to an overdose of drugs. That hit me hard, man. I know. It was like he was a cousin or something. I ain't know. He died the same day that my little cousin's funeral was. On my mama's birthday. You know. They say that uh, there's a lot of people doing all kind of crazy stuff. Trying to say that they trying to uh, raise money for DMX and all that stuff. I'm like, why would they need to raise money for him? When he, you know, got this going for himself or whatever. So his family was trying to make sure that people knew that it was a whole bunch of different things going on. That wasn't true. That was just not legit that people was doing toward him. So, yeah, 2013 was very eventful for DMX. Also, in 2013, he was found doing naked laps in a hotel in Detroit. Now, that right there is something else. 
He said that that was a dare. And he wasn't going to not do the dare. Okay, well, he still did it. That yeah. is so something else. Like It was like, I dare you to run around. <laughs> and the, run the hallway in the hotel. It was like, shit, I guess since you dare me, you know? Yeah, but he he don't know he could have went to jail for that. But I know, but when you when you can admit it was it, man, you don't be caring about that. <coughs> okay. <coughs> I gotta <coughs> let y'all know that I'm smoking on something that's good because I wouldn't be sitting up here <coughs> coughing like this. Yeah, he said that was a dare. I was watching an interview. He said that was a dare. Okay. Well, he was a dare that boy as well. But naked laps, that's crazy. And I was thinking too, what went through that person's mind that said, hey, DMX, I dare you to run naked around this hotel? Believe it or not, people, they first dare that they want you to do is to be naked or something. Maybe they just was gay or something. I don't I think know. Been, been a man. What? Okay. It, it seemed like any self-respected woman, if they wanted to see him naked, they would have just been like DMX. They probably seen him naked. Probably didn't step with him and everything. They probably wanted to see if he was if he was crazy enough to run around here naked, Mister. I do anything you dare me to do. Mm, that's something else. Well, yeah, he he got found. He was recorded, videotaped, everything when he did that. And he said, in quotes, "I am not ashamed of anything I got." I feel him on that. You know, <laughs> that was pertaining to what running naked. Yeah, he running around naked when they uh they found him doing naked laps, which means he was going around. It wasn't like he was just in the hallway here. He was probably going I around. He did one lap. I don't know. <laughs> he said he wasn't he wasn't ashamed. And then he you got. You know some. what? I'm not can't get up call me on this, but I think they locked the door. I'm not sure. I'm, I can't I can't prove they locked the door. I don't know. I'm trying to think of exactly what he said, but I don't even remember that it was a dare. He did it. Well, yeah, that's something else, child. But I think he said his eyes is around the corner or something. Ah, that is something else. So, yeah. um, He also has a silly side. They say he does uh, covers. I can't imagine his raspy voice doing a I love you. You love me because he liked to do cartoon covers. This is a fun fact about DMX. He liked to do covers. So, um... You like to create them? Huh? You like to create them or... No, covers. Like, somebody has a song and he does his own song on top of that song. Oh, see, I And never... make it seem something like... Like, say, for instance, if you were singing, Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall, sat right. on the wall, he'll be saying... Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. You know, however he say what well, he's, you know, however he say it, but he won't say those words. He'll say it the way he say it. But um, he aspired to be a pastor, and he also had plans on um being a releasing a gospel album and um being a pastor. I think I said that. He loved reruns of the Golden Girls. I used to watch the Golden Girls. I was like, okay, what? What's so funny about the Golden Girls? Have you seen it? Not even a note. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. It was funny, but I was just like, okay. Um, that's cool. I love their little theme song. Um, the three time Grammy nominee who had five albums that hit number one on the Billboard chart. He also had his first album come out and he sold two hundred and fifty thousand copies during the first week. That right there is really, really good. Um is the Grammys is just like saying that you recognize for this? Like, it, say, you know how, like, whatever you get nominated for, they're saying that we recognize that you do this? Or is it like a record breaking thing? What is it? I feel like the, I don't know exactly what the Grammys are. I never even put, I never, yeah, I never put any research into it or nothing like that. But I do know one thing that Tony Braxton said whenever she, um, so you can't sell them or nothing? Yeah, she can't. She said whenever she became, uh, broke and stuff like that. And this is a quote from her. Mm-hmm. Whenever she became broke, she had, I forgot how many Grammys she said she had, but she took them to the pawn shop. She said they wasn't worth one red penny and they supposed to be gold and they supposed to be worth stuff and all this stuff. You but, know why you can't sell a, <coughs> a Grammy? Because the Grammy, the Grammy is specifically for you. 
So nobody is going to want to come and buy a Tissue Campbell Grammy. But so, it's supposed to have all this. I know, but the pawn shop only buy money. what they sell. They can't burn that gold down. They can't do nothing but sell that back. So if they can't buy and sell it, they're not going to take it. And I don't know nobody that will take well, it. Well, they said do that they don't have no value. So, uh. Right. You, if nobody's not going to buy it, they mean they don't have no value. Okay. That's true. That's just my hypothesis. I don't got no proof behind it. They might have said, they might have they might have put Grammys on the blacklist. You know, the pawn shop have a blacklist stuff you can't, they can't buy from you. It was something else. It was something else. Okay, so since we stuck on that, see, because the way I pictured the Grammys is like, I guess, I don't know if the, since the fans probably, some of the fans probably saw the Grammys. Some people might be a good question. Some people don't might not even know where the Grammys is because you know you have fans overseas and stuff. But the way I see it, I imagine this if you know, why well, I imagine that you would be like, it'd be like a record breaking type thing. Mm -hmm. Like if you sold 60, 60 some songs and they sold 70, 70, 60 some songs, you know? But then at the same time, they it might be like we recognize you for this. Because remember, the only one I ever heard of Grammy getting is when Kendrick got the Most Conscious Rapper Award. And that's kind of like a record-breaking thing, but that's also kind of like a acknowledgement thing. So I kind of, I don't know, I'm going to have to. I'm not <laughs> interested in that. Like, I would never want a Grammy or none of those. So I just guess I never put it in. But you do want to be, be on the billboard charts. That's what my management want. Yeah. Yo, you got a, you working with some billboard chart people. You got I'm um, DJ P Trio. You, Me, we I'm got uh, who is the other dude? David Rice. I forgot his rap name. DJ Spins. I think. Well, I think he. Uh, Spins. I he got, didn't realize when you said it. I didn't know. Uh, oh yeah. DJ Spins. Uh, he he got a. Uh, I think he went good on. I think he went good on. Don't quote me on this, but I think he went good on iTunes a couple times or something. And yeah, Billboard. I think everybody in that uh group. Yeah. In touch billboard. Not everybody. Probably a couple people. I know a couple people in Loop Dog Records billboard touch. Yeah. So they also in uh, No Limit. No Limit East? Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying. A lot of people in No Limit East, all of them not, all of them not guaranteed sponsored for uh, that because I believe that's a different, you know, connection. Mm -hmm. I believe the uh, the ability to do the billboards, even to yeah, that's a know different who person. to talk to them, to even know who to talk to is completely different. That's thing. DJ Grid. Mm -mm. See, it's, I'm talking about a completely different thing. The No Limit East and the billboard people, they're different, different, they're in people. different categories yeah, right. because even though some of the people in No Limit East might be on billboard, all of them not accounted for it, but I think everybody that's in Blue Dog Records at the moment is billboard. Yeah, that's real cool. <clears throat> Shout out to Loop Dog Records. I'm DJ P Trio. Um, so we gonna go ahead about this information with DMX. Don't put me on that though, cause I'm not sure. I'm just going off of what I can remember. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, he was he was born on December eighth, eighteenth, nineteen seventy, and he died on Jan on April 9th. It still 19, sounds crazy. Twenty twenty one. He died. I'd be like, when they gonna go ahead. I just want to finish this little bit real quick. I know I usually don't be, uh, you know, pressing it. But he actually got his stage name from uh, an instrument that he liked to play, which is a DMX drum machine. So <coughs> he ended up adding the Dark Man, <coughs> Dark Man X. <coughs> then he ended up. <coughs> <coughs> I'm changing it back to DMX. <coughs> so he survived by 15 children. <coughs> and he also made the Baby Gaga list of rappers. I, I had never heard of Baby Gaga. <coughs> the list of rappers with the most uh, children along with Old Dirty Bastard, who has 13. Moneybag Yo, who has 8. And, um... He said that he have a few kids in Cali, a few kids in New York, but he's not a total piece of shit. But he didn't have all his kids in the same country, four of which he had with his ex-wife, Tashira. So Simmons. I'm thinking are some overseas because he said country. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking well, that kind of like state or is country. like country, country. A country is a different thing. I know, but... So yeah, you guys, I appreciate y'all coming through. Thank you, Chief Havoc, for uh, co-hosting with me. This is my segment on DMX. It seemed like he was a cousin to me, but um, I appreciate y'all. 
for joining us on episode 7.